Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the great defenders of the forest charge forth as the horn of the wild hunt sounds in the forest of Atheloran. As we have this Warhammer World Championship matchup between the Wood Elves led by Tank and the Skaven led by Ice Power. So for the Wood Elf army, of course, we do have those Lost Sylvan Knights. Very strong and very expensive monstrous cav unit going to be on the field. And the Skaven do have some tools to deal with them. But for the rest of the forces, there is going to be a bunch of Dryads. One of which is the Wraiths of the Frozen Heart, who do have a little bit of Frostbite to kind of help slow things down for all of their archers to get all of their shots in. And for the archers, we do have some Deepwood Scouts with Swift Shiver Shards. We do have a few units of those spread out and then we do have some glade guard as well one of which is the starfire shafts who do do uh, flaming attacks and armor piercing to boot as well we have very spread out hero core as well we have a couple of way stalkers spread across the field both of which do have the arrows of Curtis, pretty good at sniping out the characters of the skaven as well as dealing with the poison wood mortars and some of the other key targets for the skaven and then there is going to be draika for the lord she's going to be rolling in with one of her summons and this charge has been reduced down to just one, but still that is going to be the Malevolent Dryads, who do have Frenzy, very good unit, just kind of shutting down the range of the Skaven. And then we have the Pendulum, good at dealing with, like, Council Guard, who is a very common pick here, especially considering the Wood Elves can go with a pretty heavy Cav Core, and those are a good tools to deal with that. And then we have the Enfeebling Foe, which reduces melee attack and melee defense, and that is a good counter to one of Draika's and the Waystalker's counters, which is the Assassins. So pop that bad boy on one of those guys, and they're not going to be doing quite as much damage as they would have been doing might be enough to allow draika and those waystalkers to run free then kind of just kind of kite away while the rest of the unit tries and picks them off now for the skaven side we do have skaven slave spears for that front line bunch of those just gonna be trying to hold back the uh Wood Elves for as long as possible for their Poison Wind Globadiers and their Poison Wind Mortars to get as much damage in as possible. We do have some Clan Rat Spears as well, kind of backed behind the Skaven Slaves, and then we have a pair of Storm Vermin with Halberds going to be in that back line, one of which is the Council Guard, who are unbreakable and have Guardian as well, and that Guardian is going to be quite helpful in hel um, trying to keep the Assassin and Lord Skrulk nice and safe, but we do have some Arrows of Kernus already targeting Lord Skrulk, making some good connection there. We also have a Mutant Rat Ogre and some Wart Grinders just to kind of screen things out with their net and their um, earthquake. And then, so the assassin is going to be bringing rival high talisman as well as the assassin's trophy, while Lord Skrulk is going to be coming in with the Rod of Corruption and the Liber Bubonicus. So the Liber Bubonicus does a massive amount of magical damage, and so that is going to be very helpful against those lost Sylvan Knights, and it does have a range of 100, so those Sylvan Knights need to be pretty careful with Lord Skrulk on the field, and you kind of wait for those Waystalkers to do their job. And then there is the Pestilent Birth, who is going to get a summon of plague monks as well as a summon of the clan rats with vermintide and that is going to be the army actually there's also a couple of rat ogres as well for some roaming mobility and a little bit of extra mass but that's gonna be it for the skaven so let's get things rolling as the shots are already starting to fly for the wood elves just kind of targeting those characters for the skaven as the rest of all the deepest scouts kind of just really take a nice spread out formation no need to rush things too quickly they want to stay nice and clear of all of these poison wind mortars and and especially with the Deepwood Scouts, it's going to be quite easier to do considering they do have stocks, so they're going to be hidden unless they're going to start firing away. The Mutant Rat Ogre going to be just dropping back ever so slightly. I think just trying to maybe stay out of range of some of the ranges, but he's kind of moving right back in. He's going to be a good tool, though, to deal with the Lost Sylvan Knights because he does have magical damage as well, so he will be able to bypass that physical resist that they do come with. That is a whopping 75%, so definitely a very useful tool in addition to Lord Stroke because then you have at least two units to deal with that, so if one does get kind of taken out, especially against Wood Elves, that is a major threat, and definitely these two Waystalkers are doing a very good job so far at dealing with Lord Skrulk. Poison Wind shots though going to be raining on out. The shots going to be landing in amongst these Dryads and they are going to be clipping a couple of models of those. Going to be doing some nice damage there. And the Lost Sylvan Knights do charge in and I think this is going to be a little too early for that because they are going to be hit with a Lure Bubonicus and man are they taking a ton of damage so far. They are already well below half health and are on just slivers of HP so very early on in this match and that is going to be a very expensive unit. Going to be pushed off the 
the field. Mutant Rat Ogre is going to be trying to chase them off. We're going to be taking some shots from the Deep Wood Scouts. But in the meantime, Lord Skrulk has been taken out of the picture as well. More shots landing home from those Waystalkers. Going to be able to take him out of the picture. Might be able to come back, but he is very, very low and may just be done and dusted very um, early in this fight. We are going to be getting a summon of 11 Dryads right into the middle of things, right on top of these Poison Wing Globadiers. Poison Wing Globadiers going to be trying to pull out as we do get a... There was a summon of Plague Monks, a little send off from Lord Skrulk, and here is that Arrows of Kernus, though. Going to be making its way over, and it does make a little connection with Lord Skrulk, doing a little bit of damage, but he is able to uh, survive that, though it might just be enough to make sure that he does not return to the field. Uh, Rat Ogres do try and charge into these Deepwood Scouts, but they do take a ton of crossfire there and are going to be getting pretty much surrounded. Looks like we do have the Lost of Knights returning to the field. Only a few models left, eight in total, and they are on very low amounts of HP. There is going to be no more healing, and a massive pendulum going to rip right through those storm vermin with halberds doing a ton of damage and taking them down below half health a ton of value on that charge a lot of winds of magic in the meantime though it had to have been an overcasted to have done quite that much but though, however, the Poison Mortar is still able to fire freely at this point. All of the Waystalkers did have their attention focused primarily on Lord Skrulk, so they do have all of their models left and are just continuing to kind of pluck away at all of the archers, doing a bit of damage with their Poison Wind shots. And the rest of the mobility for the Skaven is returning to the field. We do have these right overs here trying to kind of just screen out all of these Deepwood Scouts, but all of them are focusing down the Poison Wind Globadiers. Now, for the Wood Elves, they do lack a bit in terms of the frontline infantry right now. Only one one unit dryads here and the, on the race of the frozen heart off to the side everything else has been routed off the summon does finally dissipate so they're gonna have to rely heavily on their ranged forces here so if the skaven are able to either weather the storm or just make them waste as much of their ammunition as possible they may be able to have a little turn in the tide late in the game but right now the balance power is in the uh, wood elf side even with losing the lost silver knights they were able to trade that with lord scroll who is right on the edge of the map right now and away he does go and that is going to be it for the leadership as even the assassin trying to get on top of Draka does have the enfeebling foe popped on him as both of the waystalkers though do kind of fire away getting him to outright shatter and now that is it for the leadership core balance power shifting more into the wood elves favor as the shots continuing to rain in onto the retreating skaven here trying to regroup their forces just trying getting around these poison wing globadiers because once these guys do go they're gonna have to rely solely on like the council guard for example who are unbreakable so if they are able to weather that storm they have a lot of, of armor to boot as well using rat ogre is pretty healthy on top of that however these uh, poison wind mortars gonna be getting collapsed on by Draka, who gets very far ahead of herself right here but there's not really any super good tools to deal with her uh, these poison wind global ears definitely don't want to be firing in rat ogres do get a nice little charge in but that is going to then bait in a ton of shots from all of the glade guard deep wood scouts and all the like right into this blob of units here gonna be plucking away at those council guard whittling them down bit by bit as those volleys are just peeling off tons and tons of models with each and every solid as they are just withering away bit by bit unable to catch the much faster wood elves especially the storm vermin like the clan rats and escaping slaves they might have enough speed i'd have to double check on that but seeing that all hope is lost ice power is going to uh, concede the victory and tank will take game one so take a look at the after battle report and then we'll update the scorecard as well tank taken game one with some very well done play by the Wood Elves. Uh, the only real critique I'd have of the Wood Elves would be with those Lost Sylvan Knights. They definitely needed to be much more careful. That is a 2,000 costing unit that got absolutely destroyed by that Liber Bubonicus. Um, and then just the... I mean, there's just some Poison One Global Deer shots and that Mutant Rat Ogre as well doing a lot of damage to boot. And it definitely had the time to be much more patient. All of those Waystalkers were doing a number onto Lord Skrulk. And once Lord Skrulk was gone, then they would have had pretty much free reign in the battlefield, only having to worry about that mutant Rat Ogre, who played it very carefully, but unfortunately he was not able to really do a whole lot. Now the Poison Wind Mortar is doing a ton of damage, getting almost 2,000 in total. But unfortunately, they were not able to carry the day. Uh, potentially bringing a second mortar might not have been such a bad idea here. You definitely need something that can deal with all of the range units for the Wood Elves. And I mean, the Poison Wind Globadiers, they just don't have that range. And surprisingly enough, only one of them was able to pay for themselves. Usually you see these guys getting like easily double their um, value. Uh, the Storm Vermin, again, just got shot to pieces. The whole fight really didn't have a whole lot to engage. The only thing that did come in was some Dryads and they did not last all too long at all. So that's one of the kind of, the, I guess, the benefits or the 
good sides for uh, the Skaven, but otherwise everything else just got completely deleted by the superior range firepower of the Wood Elves. These at Deep Wood Scouts, 1100 on these guys, and then a lot of good value on the rest. Dryads, not doing all too much, kind of as expected. And then, of course, you have the Waystalkers, who got 2,000 on this one, 1,300 on the other. Juic deleting Lord Scroll, pretty much finishing off the Assassin with just their um, Focus Fire as well. And then Draka had a very nice uh, Pendulum early on, was able to wreck some of the Storm Vermin quite effectively. But that is going to be it for Game 1. Let's roll right on in to Game 2. Hell hath no fury like that soul of damnation as Chaos is going to be firing off against Bretonia in this Game 2 matchup. We will have Tank on the Chaos side, and Ice Power will be commanding Bretonia. So for Chaos, they are going with a very nice little tight box here, as they do have Chaos Warriors with Halberds, three units of those, and they do have one unit of, of Chosen with Halberds, the Elite of the Elite. Going to be having that armor piercing bonus versus large and 120 armor to boot as well. Going to be very hard to bring those guys down. And then for that kind of outer ring is going to be just some chaos marauders with some chaos warriors with great weapons. Just kind of um, whittling down the infantry and potentially any of the foot squires, which is what those chaos warriors with halberds are going to be there to kind of just try and break them down because those are probably one of the bigger threats to the chaos warriors with halberds themselves. I uh, just need to make sure that all the armor piercing for the Bretonian is off the field and then for the lords and heroes we do have a chaos sorcerer of death can be rolling in with spirit leech and forbidden rod up on a manticore and then we have an exalted hero on his own manticore coming in with the mark of corn which does give that immune psychology melee attack base weapon damage and charge bonus when his leadership is above 50 percent and for the lord it is prince sigvald the magnificent going to be sticking right on close to that soul of damnation the Hell Cannon ROR are going to be firing away. So Prince Sigvald does have the um, Auric Armor, which does give him that little bit of regeneration. Uh, so 8 per second. And then he also has a Slippery, so giving 24 extra speed and melee defense. And Heroic Killing Blow for a little bit of extra damage on his side. And then some standard die. So he's a very, very tanky lord, and that regen makes him very hard to bring down. But Paladins should have a okay job, especially if they're able to bring a couple of them. Now, for the Bretonians, we do have some peasant mob for that front line. They are going to be spread right on across that front line. Very cheap chaff infantry, just going to be taking the, the initial shots as they can. And they will be backed up by some men at arms with some um, spearmen at arms as well. And then for the range, we do have some peasant bowmen with pox arrows mixed in with just some of the regular variant. And just kind of volume of fire is going to be the name of the game for these guys. But that uh, hell cannon going to be a pretty major threat for these guys. Uh, very tightly packed and very low leadership as well they have 44 right now and see because their base leadership is only 36 and that is a uh, pretty abysmal especially when you're getting the damage from fired on by artillery and it's going to make them route after only a couple salvos from that bad boy we do have a couple of questing knights as well in that back line as well as the companions of quenelles we do have a field trebuchet, which is definitely going to help against that uh, halberd box. They can be able to do quite a bit of damage because they do have that armor piercing, so they'll be able to punish those halberds quite effectively, but they may have wished to have brought more than one of those field trebuchets. Uh, do have some spearmen at arms protecting these guys. Not a whole lot to be worried about, though, in the back line, and there is a fourth questing knight on that far left flank. For the lord is going to be King Lewin Leonker. He does have the lion shield as well as the sword of Corone, which gives that 24 melee defense and minus 30 armor and that minus 30 armor against chaos is pretty big considering it is an aoe effect uh, we also do have the lion shield of course as i mentioned before 44 percent missile resist and magic resist we also have stand your ground foe seeker and then he does have his regen as well with uh, the favor of the our beloved son of bretonia and it is the lady's champion is what it is called that gives him that four um, hit points per second so not quite as strong as uh, prince sigvald but still something to keep him up in the fight and we do have a damsel of life bringing in earth blood and regrowth making sure if king lewin does get too low and his own passive region is not enough can either top him off with that or just kind of heal the questing knights who are very much needed here because they do have the armor piercing now they do have to be very careful of that uh, chaos chosen box um but they are going to be able to kind of deal with all of the rest of it pretty effectively. Those Chaos Warriors with great weapons shouldn't be much of a problem for them. 
that's going to be the armies. So let's get things rolling. Shots already raining into the peasant bowmen. And as you can see, their leadership is already faltering very, very quickly. And one of them has already routed on only a couple volleys. And more and more shots going to be raining on out from that soul of damnation, who does have a nice couple abilities himself, which gives a little extra uh, explosive damage and some reload as well, I believe, if I remember correctly. But King Lewin is going to be chasing down the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Death, and he doesn't have anything else to really be careful of. There is no skirmish cav, so he's going to have free reign in the battlefield. He does have to be a little careful of the Chaos Sorcerer mixed in with that Exalted Hero because both of them can do quite a bit of damage to King Lewin and um, kind of depending on that RNG could potentially be able to beat him. But that Soul of Damnation is just doing a ton of damage, taking out the um, Peasant Bowman here. The other ones has returned, but again, another volley from that Soul of Damnation might be enough to finish them off. And that Hell Cannon is just going from one Peasant Bowman to the next, because they, mixed in with the Questing Knights, are the best tools to deal with all of these Chaos Warriors with Halberds and get those guys off the field, and they're going to have a much harder time getting into that Hell Cannon and just whittling down the last of the Chaos Forces. And Bertonia is just trying to get as many units around as they can, the field trebuchet is starting to fire away, getting some nice shots into those Chaos Warriors with Halberd. Sword of Corone does go off, though, as King Lewin does charge on in, um, breaking that, or kind of just making sure that the Chaos Warriors don't get that charge. They don't really have a charge defense, and it is only peasants and men-at-arms coming in, but that will reduce their armor and will allow them to actually do a little bit of damage. But the Chaos Warriors with Halberd's going to be pushing on forward, going to be looking to just kind of screen out these Questing Knights as best that they can. And Questing Knights do get a nice charge in. They're going to be staying clear of those Halberds, though, as... Um, for the most part, and they have been able to do that, taking a little bit of damage here and there. A Spirit Leash does go down on these Questing Knights, so that's going to be t um, peeling off a bit more models on their end. And that Soul of Damnation, as always, just continuing to fire away, able to do a ton of damage to all of these peasants, and that one just landing a little bit high, but the Chaos Sorcerer and the Manticore Hero going to be roaming the skies, making sure things do kind of stay away. But King Lewin looking to be trying to chase them that Chaos Sorcerer back. Not going to be giving him any free Spirit Leeches. Going to be forcing him to either overcast it or to try and just make sure that he does get right over the top of the units that he cares about. As that uh, Exalted Hero, though, is getting bogged down a little bit by the Companions of Quinnells. As uh, is getting dragged down down to half health. It does have Fosier trying to pull out and is finally able to pull out of all of the um, cavalry here and should be able to take the flight and is going to be retreating back towards their own lines. We do get a nice charge from the Questing Knights, able to get in against that Soul of the Damnation, shutting it down, but there is Chosen just behind it and they do take a bunch of damage from there as well as the, the, the uh, Sorcerer is going to be diving down, able to try and whittle them down a little bit more and they are on the verge of routing. They are wavering just a little bit. Balance Power is actually slightly in the favor of Bretonia now. All the Questing Knights have done a good job of kind of breaking down a lot of the Chaos units, the Chaos Warriors, all of the Marauders being the first to go across the board, and that's kind of expected. They're not really going to be able to hold too well. Chaos Warriors with Halberds over here have taken quite a bit of damage, and those are the units that need to take that damage um, if they are, if the, all of the Cavalry is able to kind of break through it, because like the Peasants, all of the Questing Knights, even the Questing Knights, they're just not going to be able to really deal enough damage, like especially the Chosen is probably the biggest threat here, and King Lewin doing a good job of just kind of screening out the Chaos Sorcerer Lord as best that he can and is now going to be diving down onto the exalted hero who was trying to chase off these peasant bowmen but is now stuck on the ground against a target he does not want to be fighting alone and especially with the companions of quinnell's getting a nice little rear charge and a full surround off onto this exalted hero i think the exalted hero is going to be getting taken out and especially with that hit and that is going to be all she wrote for that exalted hero he is going to be trying to just take right off back into the sky and run for the hills i don't think with how low he is and he is not even going to get the chance to take off and down he goes. We still have the Sorcerer going to be roaming in the skies as the Sword of Crone is once again pop going to be reducing the armor of all of these units and having all these peasant bowmen now fire in. Definitely going to be able to whittle these guys down bit by bit. And there is two of those units, these two Chaos Warriors with Halberds that definitely need to get taken out of the fight. Another uh, Spirit Leech does go down on the Companions, doing a nice bit of damage. And they are taking a ton of damage here. They definitely do not want to be taken more than they uh, want to, uh, especially with that Soul of Damnation now firing in. Doing probably a bit more friendly fire here. Not a whole lot of good targets for it to be hitting. It would like to be hitting the Companions, but there's just so many of its own friendly units in the fight there. Peasant Bowman trying to get into that um, Hell Cannon, but uh, there is not going to be much uh, hope for those guys getting through the high armor of the Chaos Warriors and those Chosen. 
But for the Bretonians, they definitely have quite a few tools. I mean, with that trebuchet, if we kind of swing on back here, still sit nice and pretty in terms of uh, ammunition. So that is kind of the key target there. And honestly, at this point, uh, this Sorcerer of Death could potentially try and go for a little of a snipe against that field trebuchet. But instead, it's just going to be electing to try and just continually deal with the Peasant Bowman, which is what that Hell Cannon has done a very good job of doing so far. Going to be routing these guys off. But King Lewin now finally being able to dive in. But these Chosen, going to have a thing or two to say about that. Going to be saying no to King Lewin, pushing him right back up into the sky. And King Lewin going to be looking for maybe a little bit of easier targets to deal with. Uh, thinking about chasing these Chaos Warriors with Halberds here. Definitely a unit he would like to make sure it does not return. But the um, Field Trebuchet doing a lot of work against the Chosen. And uh, that is going to be probably the best tool left on the field. Um, and, and if King Lewin can pair that with the uh, Sword of Corone, can reduce that armor of Chosen. I mean, it would still end up with 90 armor, but it would do a little bit better work uh, for like all the peasants, for example, to just kind of whittle them down bit by bit. And with the Questing Knights charging in into the Unbraced Chosen, which was a very nice charge there, but they need to pull right back out. They don't want to be sticking around. Prince Sigvald is going to be a problem as well, and that Hell Cannon has used up almost all of its ammunition. Bounce power edging if slightly into the favor of the Bretonians here in the late game. King Lewin really able to do well at staying nice and safe, and then just picking off all of the low-hanging fruit for Chaos, and is pretty much just down to Prince Sigvald, the Chosen, and the Hell Cannon, and the Hell Cannon doesn't have a whole lot left to be offering into this um, battle at this stage in the fight. We do have that Sorcerer of Death as well, so there is going to be plenty of spell casting. And now the Chosen is starting to just get a slowly cycle charge down, and the Trebuchet is starting to really chip away at its health, getting closer and closer to about 50%. Um, but they are still very elite, very formidable opponents. 52 models left, and they will be able to do some nice damage. Questing Knights do take a few hits there. They were not able to get their charge off into the Chosen, and now the Chosen is going to be trying to surround King Luin. They do have units on all sides of him. And they are going to start to be able to do a nice bit of damage. He does pop that sort of Corone there. So that is going to allow the Peasant Bowmen that are still on the field. However, most of them have shattered. So these guys have shattered here. These guys just routed. Um, but that is going to be it for the Peasants on that side. So that is going to be the loss of the Poison as well. But that Trebuchet, almost out of ammunition itself. And if it cannot do enough damage to the Chosen, the Chosen alone might be able to just kind of carry the day because everything left for Bretonia. I mean, you have the Questing Knights, you have King Luan, all very large units are going to have a very hard time dealing with them. And King Luan just needs to make sure that he times his... Uh, sort of corones at the right time make sure that not a second of that is wasted against those chosen just reducing their armor and as much of their stats as possible while all of the cavalry kind of just slowly breaks them down and they are getting a little low in terms of leadership right now and this is probably the best opportunity get a nice charge in they do get the uh, earth ball on top of them but it looks like a spirit leech as well is going to be going down on the questing knights and there it goes going to be whittling them down but the chosen where is their banner? There it is. Their leadership is getting very low, and they are going to be actually getting a little bit of a reprieve right here, and I think that may be a little mistake on the Bretonian side. They need to keep the pressure on these Chosen. They need to break them, and King Lewin is at his healing cap, and he is going to be de um, dueling Prince Sigvald, um, and the he does have all of these Chosen just nipping him in the back as he is just trying to deal any damage to Prince Sigvald, but Prince Sigvald is very, very uh, just tanky at this point um not really taking anything there he does pop slippery i believe giving him a little bit of extra melee defense and that with that chaos sorcerer on the mentor going to be able to just kind of dish out the damages just a little better but now they are separated from the chaos or the chosen with halberds and the nice charges from the questing knights able to get on in and might be enough to break them down another earth blood going to be healing up the remaining cavalry getting as much hp back and bounce part is still in the favor of bretonia if only slightly and it is going to be down to Prince Sigvald and the Chaos Sorcerer of Death as the Chosen do finally break. They took all game to do so, and just in the nick of time as the Field Trebuchets are on their last bits of ammunition, they may have another volley or maybe two. But King Lewin himself has taken quite a bit of damage as he is getting down to about... Uh, maybe a little over a third of health left and all of the questing knights going to be getting a nice little surround off on that chaos horse of death but they themselves are also very very low 
And this is where that uh, perfect vigor of Prince Sigvald is going to come into play because he is going to be standing alone against the forces of Bretonia because away goes the Chaos Sorcerer of Death, going to be taken out of the fight and very well might just be uh, done and dusted as another sort of Corone does go down, reducing that melee defense and armor even more so. And down goes the Chaos Sorcerer, finally shattering completely. But Prince Sigvald will be standing tall as he is going to be engaging with all of the questing knights he does have. Uh, a little bit, I don't know if he has any of the crew left. I think the crew, yeah, the Soul of Them Nation is completely out of units. Though it is still bucking like a Bronco here as uh, just the battle rages around behind it. Prince Sigvald standing tall. He does pop that slippery, giving himself some more melee defense. So that is going to uh, raise his melee defense nice and high. It was, I mean, let's see if... Yeah, he's up to 84 in terms of melee defense, and that is uh, very hard to even deal damage to at this point. And King Lewin, though, is going to be getting some nice charges in. Now, unfortunately, he is caught in a forest, just kind of where the battle ended up kind of pulling um, into. Um, just kind of um, happenstance. And so far, Sprint Sigvald, though, you can see his healing cap just starting to show up on his health bar. But the balance is kind of edging a little bit back towards center, though it is still Bretonia favored. And if King Lewin can get some hits off, he'll be able to just take chunks and chunks out of Prince Sigvald's HP pool. But so far, all of his hits have just missed completely. And Prince Sigvald has actually been able to land some in return as, Prince, as King Lewin once again cycling right back in for another charge and Prince Sigvald is taking some damage bit by bit. The Spearmen I think are slowly plucking away. I haven't seen any big hits yet landed by King Lewin as he will take it to the sky once again and charge right back down. And there is a hit landing against Prince Sigvald doing some nice bit of damage here, but as Prince Sigvald uh, dishes one out in return, going to be hitting King Lewin as he does kind of pull right on back out as the Spearmen just continually bog him down and it's just going to allow King Lewin to continually cycle charge as he is. But once again, the shot does miss against Prince Sigvald and Prince Sigvald is just going to be tanking it uh, over and over, but you can see like uh, King Lewin is winded well, um, Prince Sigvald will always be fresh with that perfect vigor, but he is taking damage bit by bit, and we do get an Earthblood going to be healing up the really just the Spearman at this point, because King Lewin is at his healing cap. The uh, Damsel of Life isn't really going to be benefiting too much from that, but just keeping these Spearmen in the fight for as long as possible, and King Lewin is just continually going in and out, doing as much as he can. He is landing hits against Prince Sigvald, but it is, is it going to be enough? The Bounce Power is actually edging it more into Bretonia's favor, as Sigvald tries to get a hit into the retreating King Lewin. Unfortunately, King Lewin does pull free, and a nice little charge forward by Prince Sigvald trying to get that charge into the approaching King Lewin, and it may have been able to get him a hit, and he does stagger King Lewin with a nice hit, but King Lewin, let's just take a look at the HP pool, is at 604 health. Prince Sigvald is at 2,000 even, and is just slowly getting chipped away, though, by all of these spearmen. He is at his healing cap, as I mentioned before, as is King Lewin, and it is a duel of the lords in the late game. King Lewin Lewin standing tall. Uh, he does, uh, or he, I thought he would took another hit. He looked like he was staggered, but instead he is going to be just continually dishing up, but just not landing any hits against Prince Sigvald. He is just such a tanky lord. It's that high, high melee defense, but he is going to be popping that sort of Corone here for this charge, and he is hoping to get some hits with this active, and at this point he may need to stay in. Uh, but, I mean, the Sword of Crone does wear itself off, but it looks like he got hit in return as he was trying to pull out, taking off half of his remaining HP, down to 311. His um, eight, his leadership is wavering, and I think he needs to stay in the sky right at this point, regain that leadership. He can't afford to route at this point, because if he routes, he will, un he will very unlikely return. He does charge in, getting a little bit of leadership off with that charge, but he is going to be getting low once again as Prince Sigvald trying to get a hit in, and that is actually going to land a hit and route King Lewin, and with that, the balance of power right back to even, and still though, it says that Bretonia has even the slightest edge, but if King Lewin, I mean, I mean, even if he does come back, he has 31 health. He is one hit away from death, and these Spearmen at Arms are starting to waver themselves. They are going to be getting very low. Each hit landing against Prince Sigvald. I do hear something in the sky as, yeah, King Lewin does return. He pops that Foe Seeker, giving himself that little bit of extra vigor. But coming on back, though, he is still winded. Um, but if he gets even close to Prince Sigvald, it might be enough to keep him away. And at this point, he does. He, oh, he really, uh, King Lewin should have stayed in the sky, waited until um, Prince Sigvald did kind of pull out of the tree line here. But that he is just trying to finish him off, and Prince Sigvald finishes King Lewin off.
and now it is down to just the artillery crew and there is no way they're going to be able to kill Prince Sigval at this point. Balance Power is being kept alive solely by that Damsel of Life and that Damsel of Life uh, is not a duelist in any sense of the word and I think Prince Sigvald here is going to be able to carry the day for Chaos. Things looked mighty grim for Chaos when all of their halberds were gone and King Lewin and it was just against Prince Sigvald but Prince Sigvald just a little too sturdy to go down and Chaos does pull through in the end and so does Tank taking the series 2 to 0. So let's update that scorecard to reflect that real quick. And then let's go over the after battle report here. Such a very, very close game. So take a look at all of the like the field trebuchets getting 1300. And it's probably one of the more key units in this fight. And honestly, bringing a second one probably would have been a really good idea. Just it was it would have been a very good against dealing with all of the chosen and or and the chaos warriors with halberds. And not relying on the questing knights to do that job. Because if you take a look at the questing knights, uh, some of them did generate some nice value, 1200 and 1600 on these two. However, the other two uh, weren't quite able to really generate as much value as they do cost. Uh, Spearman Arms doing some okay work. Peasant Bowman um, did okay. Uh, some of them paying, uh, I think, for themselves. Uh, but that Soul of Damnation just did so much damage to all of them. Just um, going from one unit to the next, just kind of routing them all off one at a time. And then the rest of the Bristonians not really expecting too much from their infantry. Most of it was in their uh, for that trebuchet and their cavalry. King Lewin doing very nice getting 3600 for his value able to um, finish off that exalted hero the sorcerer of death all on their manticores uh, so generated a lot of value there and almost was enough to bring down sigvald but now for the chaos side of things that soul of damnation racking up 1700 on them and the chosen with halberds 2600 a very elite infantry definitely paid for itself um, and then the rest of the units actually the chaos warriors with great weapons didn't do all too much work um, now the halberds themselves even they didn't do that much they were able to get willed down pretty effectively by the questing knights i think the questing knights were able to time their charges just well enough so n these the halberds were not braced and then quickly pull in and out and really timed it well with that sort of corona and uh, yeah without the sort of corona i think this would have been a uh, much more chaos um, sided here that reducing that armor especially against chaos just so very very helpful and then the rest of the forces that i mean the sorcerer at death generating 2100 um in melee and with those spirit leeches doing a lot of value there especially against the very um high High value questing knights those spirit leeches generate a lot of value in there exalted hero cannot say the same only getting 286 but now prince sigvald the magnificent let's see what he's got 3600 surpassing king lewin by just a little bit um only by about in, not even 90 85 points more in value uh, really carried it for chaos here in that late game and a very close and a very exciting series but that is going to be all I have for you today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, have a good one.